In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. So this is the fourth Sunday of Lent. Uh, we're about halfway through now with our fasting. So if you haven't started fasting, now is a good time to begin. And typically on the fourth Sunday, we read the story of the Samaritan woman on, during Great Lent. However, since uh, today the calendar uh, had it so that the Annunciation Feast of the, the Great Feast of the Annunciation fell on today's date, so that trumps all the other readings. So because we have in our church seven major feasts, and those major feasts trump all the other readings. So that's why today we read about the Annunciation uh, of Archangel Gabriel to St. Mary. Um, the Annunciation of our Lord Jesus Christ has an extremely high dignity in our church. It's the precursor of all the other feasts, uh, major and minor, in our church. Um, for all the good news that's in the, in the New Testament, the Annunciation is the beginning of that. And we know we have seven major feasts, seven events in the Gospels that the church teaches us to always keep in our memory. We all know them by heart, hopefully, but if not, we'll go ahead and say it. Uh, it's the Annunciation to begin, right? And then Christmas. And then after that, we have the Epiphany, Palm Sunday, the Resurrection of our Lord, the Ascension, and Pentecost. So coming up here in the next few weeks, we're going to celebrate a lot of these major feasts, God willing. But when we look at the Annunciation, we remember the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. As we also know that later on, He endured the cross, His glorious resurrection, and Him sending us the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. All of these come from, at first, the first feast, which is, of course, the event of the Annunciation. So it's the beginning of the joyful story, which is why we chant in a very joyful tune today. Usually in Lent, we don't jo uh, sing uh, except on the Feast of the Annunciation. Because it's the story of our salvation, redemption, and renewal of all of our humanity and all of our lives. The story we read today is the beginning of the fulfillment of what's called the divine economy or the divine plan for our salvation. That would reverse the corruption that happened to the world and to all of humanity when Adam and Eve sinned and afterwards humanity digressed worse and worse into sin after the centuries that followed Adam and Eve. So the story that we read today, that joy that comes from the Annunciation, is an announcement to all, not just St. Mary, but to all of humanity as a whole, but more importantly, to us on a very personal level. At the beginning of St. Luke's Gospel, which we read, he says that the purpose of his Gospel, the purpose of all the good news in his Gospel, was that you may know the certainty of the words within which you were instructed. St. Luke has the most detailed account of the story of the Annunciation, the story of Christmas. And we thank God for that because we learn a lot um, from his recounting of this uh, beautiful story. We read, uh, we read on the passage, um, we read this passage a few times during the year on the second Sunday of Kiak in December and leading up to, of course, Christmas and also on the Feast of the Annunciation, which is today. And uh, we read it also on the 29th of most of the Coptic months. So whether it falls on a, on a Sunday or, or a weekday, we read it to celebrate the three major feasts of the Lord, which is the Annunciation, Nativity, and Resurrection. So when we're celebrating those three feasts, we read the story of the Annunciation because it is the beginning of all of the, the, those great events. That is what the Archangel in today's story is announcing, the good news of our salvation. And this is very, very good news. We may forget that at times, but it is the greatest news that somebody can ever give us, that God has begun to execute the promises of the Old Testament, and now salvation is nearer than ever. Though there was more to do by the Son of God, but now He has begun the work, and so it will be finished soon. And so that's why... Um, uh, Simeon said, Lord, now you're letting your servant depart in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, even though he was just looking at the baby Jesus. He said, my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all peoples. Because now that we know that when the Lord begins the work, it will be finished. Our Lord wants us to live in this life of joy and happiness, this pure life, this really, this um, pure type of joy that no one can take away. When the angel appeared to the shepherds, for example, he, he told them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. And our Lord himself said, I will see you again, and your heart will rejoice, and your joy no one will take from you. And St. Paul commands us, saying, Rejoice always. 
Somebody is commanding you to be happy. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you, to be living in that joyful life. The Annunciation is the beginning of this joy because it is the beginning of the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Word of God uniting, of course, with our fallen humanity. And through this unity, God remakes our human nature, remakes our life, and restores humanity. When we read today's story, we find two shining examples for us to follow. We have the Archangel Gabriel, and then we have, of course, our Holy Mother, St. Mary. And God help us to be more like them. There is a very striking resemblance and contrast between the encounter of the Archangel Gabriel with St. Mary and that of the evil angel Satan with Eve in paradise. And many of the fathers speak about this. And I know we spoke about this last December, but it's good that we review it once more. An angel came to both, right? An angel came to Eve. It was an evil angel called Satan. Uh, he was a good angel, but then he, through his pride, fell. And now he's approaching Eve, the first mother. And now to St. Mary, a holy angel, Archangel Gabriel, is appearing to St. Mary, uh, whom we call the second Eve. And we'll see why. So let's compare the two. Satan came to Eve to deceive her. On the contrary, though, Gabriel came to St. Mary to reveal heavenly truths. The serpent, or Satan, brought confusion and death with his deception. When St. When uh, Eve fell into the deception through pride, what followed? Death entered into the world. Gabriel brought news of eternal life and helped Mary to understand. And so um, Eve was not saluted. She was not greeted because, of course, Satan hates humanity. Uh, he didn't greet her with honor um, because, uh, he, again, he hates humanity with a, a deep hatred. Gabriel, however, saluted St. Mary and proclaimed peace to her and encountered her with love on behalf of all of humanity. Eve, interestingly, when Satan came to her and said, if you disobey God, you will become more like God. And Eve did not question it. She believed it because she wanted, to, you know, because of pride, she wanted to believe it. Uh, Eve did not question the serpent's deceptions, um, but believed it without using her God-given rational thinking to question and to ask, how can this be? She didn't ask how she will become a goddess, like Satan promised, if she disobeyed the commands of God. She didn't think it through that she was already created to be like God, in the image of God. So she was already like God. That was the great deception. And as soon as she heard that she will be like God by sinning, she immediately believed, and um, she believed this deception, and because of pride fell and death entered into the world. Now let's see what happens with St. Mary. St. Mary, on the other hand, humbly asked for an explanation of the wonderful things that Gabriel told her and questioned how these things would be. How would they transpire? And the Archangel Gabriel told her that her son is the Son of God because he will be conceived by the Holy Spirit. And afterwards she consented and made it possible for mankind to become like God. So Eve lost that divine image Mary, St. Mary, brought it back by consenting and made it possible for mankind to again be like God, renewing that divine image as they were before the fall of Adam and Eve. By Eve's silence came guilt and the corrupted human nature. By, by Mary's discourse, you see how she's discoursing with Archangel Gabriel, life and light and victory and renewal of humanity uh, was received through uh, her, her, her consent. Eve's believing the liar, consenting to disobey God, caused sin to cast humanity out of paradise. And because of this, we are now, there's something built into every human being that wants paradise again. We want to live in paradise. St. Mary believing the angel and consenting to do God's will brought humanity back to that paradise. And for this reason, we call her the Theotokos or the second Eve. So Eve, the mother of the human race, believed a lie from the dark angel Satan. He told her that if she sinned, she would be like God. She accepted this lie without questioning, without Satan's, um, you know, accepting Satan completely, without any kind of, uh, you know, discourse. You know, how can, how can Satan 
contradict God and it be true if she didn't think that through. And consequently, she opened the door to a corrupted human nature and was exiled from paradise. But St. Mary, on the other hand, our second Eve again, faithfully dialogued with Archangel Gabriel, received an even more remarkable and marvelous promise than even the lie of, of the devil, that she would not only be like God, but that she would bear God in herself. And this is a greater promise. And after discoursing the truth, through questions and dialogue, she accepted the words of the Archangel Gabriel. We can be like St. Mary. You know, and show the humility and the obedience and the seeking of understanding that St. Mary sought. She bent her will to that of God's will, and by doing that, humanity received salvation. When she said, may it be to me according to your word, so she consented, and God was waiting for this consent. May we all be like St. Mary, showing such beautiful virtues, hearing God's words, believing in them, treasuring them in our hearts, and living through them daily. And like St. Mary, may we be a partner with God in bringing healing and salvation to this world, because St. Mary is a wonderful example for us to follow. The other shining example in today's story is the Archangel Gabriel. Uh, he also becomes a model for us to follow. He brought the news of salvation to St. Mary, and consequently, that news was brought to us. And as we hear it, we also need to be like Archangel Gabriel, announcing the good news and the joyful news of salvation to everyone we meet, not just with our words, but with our actions. Through the Annunciation, uh, we received that good news. And though the Annunciation was first heard by St. Mary, it was actually an Annunciation to all of us. We hear it today, and we benefit, and we are joyful because of it. The world today needs more Archangel Gabriels to go out into the world and to preach this good tiding to all these people, bringing God's good news of peace and comfort and salvation to the hearers, because people don't know. There's a lot of negativity, and guess what? This year, there will be a lot more negativity because of the elections and all that, so expect a lot of negativity to be around you. What if you were different as an option? Right? What if you were different, like Archangel Gabriel, bringing, instead of negative words, healing words, and words of comfort and joy and hope, to ultimately lead them, lead them to Christ, saying, who says to us, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest. So if we can lead them to Christ, to these troubled souls, then there's a lot of them out there to give rest. And there are many out there with these troubled souls, with broken hearts, that need these words of comfort, words of joy, words of power, words of victory. There's nothing out there in the world but defeat and sin and despair. And with your words, you can change things. You can be like that candle that lights up the room. Can you be the one who says to them, the Lord has come for you to give you rest, to give you salvation, if we can give that message to others? In Romans chapter 10, St. Paul says, How beautiful are the feet of those who approach, I'm sorry, who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. How beautiful are the feet who bring good, good, glad tidings of good things. Let's have our mouths be ready to give good, hopeful, encouraging words, especially to a world that needs it, um, especially to those who are far from salvation, encouraging them to repent, and reminding them that it's easy to repent because God is the one who gives the support. Some of the things that can be announced, those good news, uh, those nuggets of good news that we can give to all, are, first of all, that your sins are forgiven. It's important to know that people can have access to forgiveness of sins. This is very good news. People are very aware of their sins, but they live in despair because of it, which causes them, of course, to sin even more and more. You can break that cycle in their life by saying that there is an option for forgiveness of sins, that Christ has come for that purpose. And the many examples of Christ forgiving sins in the Gospels, there's so many examples. You can announce the receiving of the Holy Spirit, that, we, that there's a uh, possibility that the Holy Spirit lives inside of you, like we all have today, right? And that the Holy Spirit guides us to live a pure life and a life of joy and a life of victory. Uh, he dwells with us to guide us, to act within us, to become agents of God's fellow workers. We can announce that God's promise 
uh, for us to live forever, to be with him forever. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. And he's still with us even 2,000 years later, acting in our lives. And he's there to protect us forever. There's also the good news of our victory over all evil. As our Lord says, Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and upon all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. That is a very comforting message to us and that we can also give to others. And his word to the Apostle St. Paul, Do not be afraid, for I am with you, and no one will attack you to hurt you. And there's an eternity that lives as well. Right, that is that truly does exist, and to make people mindful of their eternity is also some of the great enunciations that we could do in our life as well. So may God always help us to make this world uh, a little bit brighter, right, and help us to be agents of good, agents of hope, agents of uh, the dispelling of the despair that's in the world through the amazing messages that our Lord Jesus Christ gives us. And may he grant us to be more like St. Mary and Archangel Gabriel, accepting this message for our, in our own lives, first of all, and then becoming agents of hope and joy, proclaiming his message of salvation for his glory forever. Amen.